What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about how to behave like a Norwegian. I'm very, very excited for this video because Norwegians and Americans just seem to be so different. Our cultures seem to be so entirely different. I'm very curious about what are the, the little things that Norwegians do, the customs and things Norwegians wear and say and do on a daily basis that will finally give me some insight on how to become a true Norwegian or at least how to act like one. I think that sounds very fun and very entertaining. So uh, without any further ado, let's take a look. Number one, the raskebrille. Fast glasses. <laughs> Very Norwegian thing. So why are these fashionable? <laughs> Wait a minute. The raskebrille. Fast glasses. These glasses, yeah. These glasses, I have seen these before. This is like stereotypical Norwegian skier or something. Has these very specific glasses. I don't know. These are, these are like very sporty. They're not very popular in the United States at all. They're a very unique design. How did these become popular in Norway? Why? I, I have seen these before. And sometimes in like movies and stuff with Norwegians. Fast glasses. Rask, what are these called? Raske Briller? Very Norwegian thing. So why are these fashionable? I think it's because we like to look like we're sporty, even if we're not. They're yeah. actually sport glasses, but... Yeah, they're sport glasses. They're very sporty. I feel like you'd wear these when you're skiing. That's like the only time I've ever seen this. They have... They have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> when something goes into something, integrated themselves into fashion, so you don't really have to sport. Number two. <laughs> So, are these glasses actually fashionable in Norway, or are they like, are they overdone, are they a little cliche, or, or are these very popular? I, I actually am, don't know, but I have seen them on Norwegians in like, movies and stuff. Turklar hiking clothes. Turklar hiking clothes. Well, uh, this just makes sense. I think Norwegians have some of the highest quality hiking equipment and clothing in the world because Norway is such a hiking culture. Uh, well, I mean, America doesn't hardly have any hiking or, yeah. So this is a huge difference. You always have to look like you're going on a hike, even though you aren't, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta look like you're going on a hike, even if you're not. You gotta look like you're skiing. You gotta have the glasses and the the big skiing jacket, even if you're not. <laughs> Will I blend in? Do I look Norwegian? You look very Norwegian. The weather <laughs> changes quite quickly as well sometimes, so it's really practical to have clothes that will actually keep you dry. Oh. Oh, this is actu actually practical. I never thought about it like that. Like having a jacket, a sporty jacket like this that zips up and down, it looks waterproof uh, because of the weather. Changes so quick in Norway. In America, you can pretty well depend on it to be, you know, sunny all day or whatever the weather station says. And like I said, you never know. You know when the next hike is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Norwegian arm. People are so polite here in Norway that they would never want to interrupt you while you're eating. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't ask you to pass the salt. They just very politely reach your arm, grab it by yourself. Don't interrupt, don't disturb, it's really politeness. <laughs> what? Wait, what? The Norwegian arm, where you reach across the table to get stuff instead of asking? Norwegians are too polite to ask. Isn't it more rude to reach in front of people and reach over people's food, isn't that more rude than just asking? Or maybe maybe it's just perceived differently. Right, that they would never want to interrupt you while you're eating. You don't want to interrupt each other while eating. 
So you don't want to interrupt and ask someone to stop eating and to give you pass the salt or pass whatever. So you just reach. Okay. All right. I mean, I've seen Americans do both. Americans aren't really worried about being polite or being rude very often, but I'm a little confused by this one because uh, this could be perceived as a little rude, I think. Politeness. <laughs> Never ask to be passed anything. Yeah, you sort of get used to it. Yeah. Not always seeing your plate because there's an arm in the way. So what? <laughs> yeah, wait. So you just get used to this? Everyone reaching over the table? What? This is... <laughs> This is kind of like counterintuitive to me because it's polite in a way. It's polite, but it's also probably gets on everyone's nerves uh, also. So this is a very funny one to me. I've never heard of this. So why do you think people do it? We don't want to interrupt people. And it's very efficient. To not unpaid okay. voluntary work for a community or a person. Last time I did it. Oh, the Dugnad. I have learned about the Dugnad. It's like community work. Nothing like this exists in America. This is a very Norwegian concept where you you participate in cleaning up or uh, the community or a school or the apartment complex and everyone participates. And yeah, this is, there's nothing like this in the United States at all. Do not. We were shoveling dirt in the garden for uh, <laughs> several hours and it wow. was really nice have you been on a dugnad lately no when I'm was last time you were there? selfish little maybe that's why people do a lot of dugnad in norway because we have a word yeah when people hear the word dugnad they know oh i have exactly. to show up interesting i wonder how often the dugnad happens and uh if you don't participate you can be sort of socially outcasted a little or something like that or cabin Oh, what is this? Hitta? Now they know. Oh, I have exactly. to show up. Hitta or cabin. Cabin. Cabins are such a nice part of Norwegian culture. That That is something I'm very jealous of. Like, I'm jealous of Norwegian mountains and fjords and ferries and cabins. Those seem so nice. And I, from what I can tell, a lot of Norwegians have a cabin and just use it to relax and enjoy life. And that just sounds so nice. Everyone goes to a cabin, right? <laughs> yeah. There are 1.16 cabins per square kilometer. There is a cabin every kilometer in Norway. That is unbelievable. Like if you have a cabin in the United States, you are you are living large. You are like, you're kind of rich. Like you must have a lot of money or something or someone in your family must have bought it a long time ago. It is very rare, but there's not that many lakes and, and stuff out here in America to, to build cabins on. And there's not as much hiking and yeah, it's, it's not, it's not really much of an American thing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's up with this cabin culture? We like to disconnect and be close to nature and... That's another Norwegian thing, disconnecting and being close to nature and re rebooting and relaxing. And Americans could really use that. Like, I think it'd be good for our, men our mental health. But Americans are so, so unwilling to get off the phone, get off the Internet, get off the television. Americans are very set in our ways and very dependent on technology, a lot more so than Norway. Honestly, Norway seems much more in touch with nature, which which is really nice to, to hear about. And that's the perfect place to do that. My third week here in Norway, I went to a cabin and it was very Norwegian and very lovely. <laughs> it was the best time of my life, basically. <laughs> if you get a Norwegian friend, they most likely have a cabin somewhere. On wow. a Friday, just go to a cabin, do it. That is so cool, Al. Just most people in Norway have a cabin. Like, that is actually so cool. Feel it. I implore you. What to do? <laughs> is that a strong recommendation? I don't know. No shopping on Sundays. Your fridge is empty, you're hungry and hungover, and you'd like to go out for some shopping. No. I cannot believe that. Man, these are shockingly, shockingly different than American culture. 
like the Dugnod we would never do. We don't have any cabins. And Americans would would never survive without being able to shop on Sunday. Americans definitely, definitely shop on Sunday. And we depend on it. And uh, I think a lot of Americans would be very, very, very upset if stuff was closed on Sunday. I mean, we're very used to it, but we're also very dependent on stuff as a culture. Like, for sure. We, we like being pampered and coddled and... We need to go to the grocery store every day, whenever we need it, and uh, restaurants and all that. So this is a big one that's different. No, there are many reasons why shops are closed on, on Sundays, but the main ones are it's a religious yeah. and political standpoint. We're oh, is it a religious thing? And a political thing? There's, there's like, uh, there's some religious stuff about closing on Sunday in America. Like alcohol in some states can't be sold on Sunday for religious reasons. And some restaurants close. Chick-fil-A <laughs> comes to mind, but that's about it. Workers in Norway have the right to have a day off, but normally like food- Wait, what is this? Standpoint. Workers in Norway have the right to have a day off, but normally like food wise, petrol stations are open, small shops are open. And I guess you-, you some places are open. Workers have the right to be off on Sunday in Norway. Wow. Uh, for, for many, many jobs in America, you, you would expect to have to work on Sundays sometimes, for sure. It's, it's definitely not against the law here. You will get accustomed to it. Keep to yourself. Many Norwegians <laughs> are not very keen to talk to strangers. If you're taking the bus, for example, don't go sit next to someone if there's a row of... Keep to your... <laughs> what a blunt way of saying it. Keep to yourself. I think this is very important for Americans to understand. Like, Americans, this is one of the biggest differences between Norway and America. Americans will talk to you. Americans will bug you. Americans will give their opinion. Americans will be loud. Americans do not have the, the same respect that Norwegian culture has, where it's like, keep to yourself. Americans don't <laughs> have any concept of that. Uh, and it, it's just totally normal here, honestly. Free seats, be a bit reserved when it comes to human interaction. If you pass someone in the street, don't necessarily say hi. Just <laughs> walk by carefully. We are friends. Right, it's funny because in America, you would almost be a little worried about being rude. It might be rude to not say hello or how are you doing or, or give a nod or something. That would be rude. But in Norway, saying something would be rude. It's, it's literally the complete opposite. Definitely. Definitely. Mostly. A bit shy and a bit yeah. reserved. Don't keep to yourself. The rules are inverted when you're out on a hike. When we're outside walking in the woods, <laughs> the shyness and the reservedness is gone. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. This is... <laughs> I, it's, it's funny how different it is to American culture. In American culture, you might say hello when you see someone outside or... Americans don't go on hikes very much or into nature, not very much. So if you are an American and if you went out into the nature in the middle of nowhere, you might say hello if, if both people are friendly. But at the same time, Americans don't really trust each other very much. So it might be a bit uncomfortable in that situation for, for someone to approach you because you're in the middle of nowhere, you might think that they are up to something, or you, you don't know them, you don't trust them. Especially if it was some guy, like, approaching some woman, who and they were alone in the woods. Like, Americans just don't trust each other at all with this kind of stuff. So it actually wouldn't really be the same. Uh, so I, I feel like that's actually a big difference between how friendly... Norwegians are while hiking. Huh. 
Talking to a stranger on a bus is a bit strange. Talking to the, a stranger in the middle of the woods feels safe and nice. Wow. If you meet the stranger in the woods, say hi. Say hi. <laughs> if you pass them. Yeah, yeah, you don't, don't. That is so funny. If you see a stranger in the woods, say hi. <laughs> It's the opposite of America. Wow. Follow people in the woods. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. No. So now hopefully you understand the secrets to becoming a Norwegian oh, a little yes. bit better. Yeah, I feel like I know myself a little bit better at least. Well, there you go. But what do you want to know about Norway and where do you want us to go? Leave a comment. Okay, there you have it. How to behave like a Norwegian. Wear, uh, wear these glasses. <laughs> wear a big... A uh, sporty jacket. Um, reach across, uh, reach across everyone's food at the table and grab stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, reach across. Um, you get off work on Sunday. You might have a cabin. Oh, that's that's awesome. Um, what else? Stuff is closed on Sunday. Don't bother people. But it's okay to bother people if you're on a hike. Okay, got it, got it. Uh, this video was by Visit Norway, and I gotta give it a like because that was fantastic. That was funny and enjoyable, and I actually learned some very interesting nuances, details about Norwegian life and how Norwegians interact and and what kind of stuff you wear and. It's so funny how, how different, how similar stuff is, and yet how very different these details are between America and Norway. So it's always so fun to learn about. So interesting. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture, Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.